This is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast, where CEOs, senior leaders, and executives share their advice. It's six questions in nine minutes because the best leaders know how to share their ideas concisely and quickly. Let's jump right in. In a few sentences, tell me who you are and what you do. Hi, Stacey. My name is Heather Malinchek, and I'm the former chief marketing officer of the Harley-Davidson Motor Company. Um, born and raised in a small village in Scotland, uh, moved to the U.S. in the late 90s and uh, having traveled the world and now call the U.S. home. And I'm a global marketing executive, worked across a number of categories and brands, uh, so I have a pretty diverse set of experiences. And uh, what I really do is create, reinvigorate and help transform brands and uh, that result in business growth. That's kind of my, my story. That's amazing. And of course, everybody wants to know, do you drive a Harley? Do you ride a Harley? I do. I do ride a Harley. I've been riding a Harley for a long time and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, what's the big one where they meet up every year? Um, yeah, there's a few. Sturgis is the big one that everybody Sturgis. meets right here. Um, but uh, yeah, there's lots of, lots of opportunities to, to ride and it's a great country to be able to do that in actually. That's amazing. Well, good. Well, we'll do a whole nother podcast just to talk about writing. <laughs> That'll be super fun. We need more female <laughs> writers, so. I know, it's true, we do. I just took up writing quads here recently, so oh, yeah. uh, for some that's desert good. writing. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot of fun. <laughs> Start up a little stable, and then I'll move to two. <laughs> <laughs> From your perspective, what's the best thing about leading people? Um, you know, I'm really proud of the teams that I've learned, uh, that I've led through my career. I think the, the biggest thing for me is being able to find or identify uh, talent or potential talent in people that they don't maybe know that they even have and then helping helping give them opportunities where they can actually start to uh, to work on that a little bit and create an environment for them to thrive so a lot of the teams I've worked with we've done you know so-called strike teams or things where we put people in and challenged and stretched them and um, and and shown them that they can do more than they thought they could do and that's that's a point of pride for me too do you have any uh strategies on how you identify some of those unique gifts that people have is it just as simple as paying attention <laughs> i think i think it is though because I, I think i always try and connect with my team on a on a personal level just to really understand who they are and what makes them tick mm -hmm. and uh, i think from there having those conversations and continuing to have those conversations with your team members you should at least identify where they're interested and passionate about things and then give them an opportunity to, to test it out yeah, I love Thanks. that. Question three. I often hear from other leaders that business would be great if it weren't for that pesky people part. I'm curious, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, wow. Um, so I, if it relates to the consumers side of things, I think that people are really missing the mark because, you know, it can be complicated, but I think, you know, I, I can't, and I did not say this, so I can't credit myself with this, but somebody I read recently said the most important C in the C-suite is consumer. And I really, I really believe in that. And I think if you are, and I've worked with brands and particularly with Harley, where we got really close to who the consumer was. And if you really understand and empathize with them and you're really serving their needs, then, um, then the business takes care of itself. But if you're ignoring that and just creating things for the sake of creating things and trying to sell things to people, that's the wrong way to think about it. So it's actually fascinating. And this is part of, you know, my background is being really curious about people and what people do and why they do the things they do. I find it really fascinating to be able to connect that uh, with uh, who people are with brands. So I, I think there's, there's a lot of fun in it. So it can be challenging sometimes, but um, I think if you miss that piece of it, then uh, you're, you're missing the potential of your business. Well, and I, I'm hearing a thread here as you talk about this, that it's that healthy curiosity that actually is a big piece of what is spurring, you know, your insights, your, you know, the things that you're seeing and, you know, right. possibly, probably even the actions that you chose to take at different yeah. points along the way. Yeah. Leaders need to, need to listen more and observe more. Not always be, my, one of my, one of my favorite bosses always told me, don't always be the first person in the room to talk. Mm -hmm. um, and I always take that quite seriously because I think sometimes you hear you hear way more so you hear way more and see way more if you're if you're just listening and observing yeah absolutely question four what other successful business leaders like yourself should be on the podcast I'm curious who else should we be paying attention to who has a great voice out there right now 
Um, so I have a, a, a favorite person right now called Sarah Robohagen. And I don't know if you are aware of her. She's, no. uh, she just uh, took a new position as the CEO of Exos, mm -hmm. which is a high performance training company um, based in Arizona. She's also formerly with Gatorade and with Equinox. And she is a, she's a real transformational business leader. And, and uh, she's an author. She wrote a book called Extreme You, which is fascinating and really inspirational, I think certainly to women, but I think leaders in general. So I, I would love to hear her talk about her journey. I've been following her on social media for a while. So I would, I would highly recommend her. That's great. Thank you. What well, piece of advice? What's that? She's from New Zealand. So. Ah, she's a Kiwi. I like that. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Um, what other, uh, excuse me, what piece of advice about communication would you give to other leaders? Um, so I think it goes back to a little bit of what I was talking about with the teams. I think staying connected to your team and getting people to know people on a personal level. And I don't mean about being everybody's friend. I just mean really understanding um, the makeup and the, uh, the values and the passions that your team has. Um, you, you can't do it with everyone for sure, but you need to be able to really understand who they are and what's important to them to be able to get the best out of them. So I think communication that way. And then particular in times like we're going through right now where there's particular challenges and where your business is challenged, you need to be over communicating and not hiding. Um, you know, I've seen some leaders who have gone, uh, gone like gone dark and really literally not been, you know, out with town halls. And I think in challenging times, you need to be even more in front of your team and, and communicating with your team. So I think that's, that's a big piece of it. And the other piece I would say is, again, um, sometimes it doesn't mean saying a damn thing. It's just about observing and listening um, and having compassion for people and, and really treating people as, as individuals. Not everybody is the same. So I think communicating in that way and, and not, not in meetings and not part of tasks like your annual performance review, um, but just ha having those conversations and having them regularly. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that connection, right? Actually being yeah. connected human to human. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Magic question number six for you. Tell us about your favorite boss or teacher who really influenced you. Um, I think uh, ooh, I would <laughs> say I've had, I've actually had several and I, um, I've been very lucky to have really great bosses in my career. I've also had people who haven't been great, but have taught me what not to be yeah, <laughs> I think. Mm -hmm. That's the more indirect mentors, if you like. Um, I think the one, one of my favorites though, is a, a gentleman who, um, I worked at British Airways and, uh, he was the one, he was sort of the first, uh, I would say American leader. And the reason I say that is because he was very, uh, very inspirational, very motivational, very big personality, um, very strong leader. And what he always taught me was to constantly ask the question about what's the worst that can happen from a personal point of view. So, when you're thinking about challenging yourself, think about what's the worst that can happen. And that, that was really powerful to me. And he's, he's the reason, to be honest with you, that I ended up in the US because I had a perfectly good life in the UK and was going, doing great in my career there and had great friends and all of those things. And I had an opportunity to move to New York and, and, I, and I asked the Dale question. I said, okay, what's the worst that can happen? And, uh, and I moved like within two weeks and never looked wow. back. So. And I use that too in business to drive innovation. You know, as we think about things in business, it's like you ask, what's the worst that can happen? Um, and so you can think through those. So it's, it's taking informed risks. It's not about just going rogue and doing things for the sake of it. Um, but it's just a, it's been game changing for me and has been for some of the brands that I've worked on too. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, we actually talk about a risk assessment process all the time. I mean, think about it. What, what's the what's the risk? What's the severity? What's the probability? Right. Yeah. Um, and I love that because I think, again, those are the tools that really help to um, I think it, it, as a leader, it's challenging to feel alone to make decisions. And it helps you to have that comfort in knowing that you've got at least some some process that, to walk that. Through. Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's great. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. How well, can people find you? Yeah. Um, so I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I'm on Twitter too at Harley girl one, two, two. Harley uh, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm on LinkedIn. I'm pretty active on LinkedIn these days. So we'd love to connect with people if they, uh, if they want to chat and I'm always open to offering, um, advice on career if people are interested in that too. And I'm doing some consulting work right now. So, uh, come find me on LinkedIn. Yeah, that's wonderful. Well, and I encourage everybody to do that. Please go check out Heather and, and introduce yourself um, and, um, and get more great insights there. So 
Again, thank you so much for being on. This is Stacey McKibben with the Master Communicator Podcast. For more ideas and insights, please go check us out at www.conciliateam.com. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Take care.